What was I playing? <laughs> Party up, baby! Y'all gon' make me lose my mind! Up in here! Up in here! <laughs> Words to Live By by DMX. Rest in peace, my brother. What's wow. up? Did that for you. You know, Jeff. Yes, Jeff, sir. Jeff Linsky of Mountain Connect is with us this week. And how's, there, how's everything going, IoT Coffee Talk Universe? But that should have been our walk-up music, man. We got. <laughs> I, I noticed we got no walk-up music. Yeah. Uh oh. Who's mama? Uh oh. It was it was the poultry attire you're wearing. I don't know what <laughs> for poultry attire. Uh oh! I need to know what that poultry attire looked like. It was you what know. you see. We see Leonard wearing. Oh, yeah. but you were wearing all. You were wearing oh, I coffee tops. We were all wearing the shirts. Oh we were, yes. We were wearing your shirts from Etsy. Yeah. My Etsy build. Yeah. That's right. We're here to keep your Etsy business in business. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm making that dollar on that Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> People have a choice charity or fashion. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty clear cut. I mean, you know, you either have a good heart or, you know, you just want to look. Or you good. don't. One or, or the other. Don't. I mean, <laughs> how many people want to look bad and be you know, just completely selfish. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, but how many people don't know they look bad? <laughs> Lots of people don't okay, know. Okay, Bill, you me. always have, and Bill, you always have the best t-shirts. What does your shirt say? Oh, this is, this is my, my Venice Beach. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. It. But, but it's not that. It's the hat. Oh. It's the buff. Oh, 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 <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Oh, I love it. Oh my wow. gosh. Custom yeah. hats. We got to get one of those IoT Coffee Talk custom it. hats. F A and F O. F A and F O. Everyone needs to recognize that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do. Boom. Awesome. So, Jeff, hey, yes, sir. man. Um, congratulations on a great event last week. Um, Bill, Rob, and I were there. And uh, we have an episode that we cut last week. So, folks, if you missed out, we were sitting on stage, had a IoT Coffee Talk live at Mountain Connect 2023. So, Jeff, hey, why don't you share with our audience what is Mountain Connect? And so this year we <clears throat> so Mountain Connect is one of the, one of the last independent broadband conferences in the U.S. And when I say independent, we're not affiliated with um, association. We're not an association, so we don't have members. So it's a it's a ground up uh, effort. Um, and this year we celebrated our ninth year. And when I took it over, it was a very narrowly focused event. Uh, when I say narrow, um, the folks in attendance, it's really a one day seminar. Um, we're from the Western Slope of Colorado talking about our BTOP grant and its impact potential impact to Western Slope communities, mm -hmm. about 80 people. And this year, you know, this year we, we had just under 900 people there. So, wow. and, and sometimes you have to be careful what you ask for, right? So I, I attended Mountain Connect in the early days because I started Colorado's first local technology planning team down in the Southwest part of Colorado where I used to live. And one, I think the second year I attended, I went to the guy who was running and I said, you know, we should, you should really think about expanding this at, at, at a minimum to include, you know, the rest of the state of Colorado. And he said, well, if you want to expand it, you take it over. <laughs> and so he, he handed it to me and, you know, I've never, never run a conference before. So I've managed to, um, over, over the years, grow it, you know, from 80 to 900 um, and hopefully it'll continue to grow a little bit. I don't want it to grow beyond a certain number, but because right. I think you start to lose network value. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so for for the attendees, um, but I think one of the reasons why it continues to to grow is what you know we're I'm focused on the folks who need help. So it's always going to be the tier three, tier four communities, yeah. counties, WISP, telcos, utilities, yeah, yeah. schools, healthcare. Yeah. Um, I have a very diverse agenda, which mm-hmm. um, goes out into the core of the network and comes all the way in, into the edge. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of conferences that do that. I'm also technology agnostic for the most part. So yeah. wireless has always been a part of the conference. Um, not a big fan of satellite has a place, but um, <laughs> It, it it doesn't necessarily have a place uh, on my agenda. So, oh, Starlink, yeah. baby, Starlink. Twist, twist the knife. You don't oh, want well, a little Elon bit. showing I, up I, and charging you uh, his keynote fees, right? Like, <laughs> well, listen, a billion dollars. <laughs> listen, at the end, at, at the end of the day, it it has a place, but I think it has a very narrow. It has a very narrow value, and if we're really talking about wow. mm-hmm. not only um, connecting folks in rural areas, but more importantly, making sure that we connect um, people who 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 may live in communities in metro areas and are surrounded by amazing infrastructure, but are not being served or being underserved because of demographics. That's a bigger problem we need to solve because everyone should have equitable access to yeah. compete in a global economy. And I think I think if you look at economic development numbers. And I think I talked about this a little bit at the conference. So think about applying for a job today. It's yeah. all done online. If you don't have access to the tools to right. create a resume and s- submit that resume, then you're not going to be able to compete. Yeah. And I think as we look forward to one of my passion projects is emerging technology applications. And I think what we're in, what what's coming is going to have a massive impact on the way we work, entertain ourselves, educate ourselves, um, healthcare, you know, care for ourselves as well. So we, everyone needs to have equitable access. Yeah, that's right. yeah for sure. Good stuff. We have certainly learned a lot this last week. Like we really all three of us, three amigos who were there learned so much, lots of new acronyms. <laughs> Learn, <laughs> learned about the, the about nitty the gritty <laughs> the nitty gritty you know of the the bead deal i haven't read the whatever 9800 page document which has its own acronym what's it what is it domo fomo photo fomo <laughs> i don't know oh yeah yeah F- uh, fear, fear of mess, missing out on that no there was it, there's actually an acronym for the release of the bead actual document oh. that people were throwing around oh, the the note well there's there's two acronyms there's the notice of funding opportunity and then there's the um funding allocation mm-hmm. so those are the two big announcements and unless you're talking about build america buy america baba yeah no it wasn't that one but it was specifically related to the release or the whatever of the document that everybody uses to figure out all the bead stuff and Everybody was throwing around a four-letter acronym for what it was called. <laughs> um, and it might have been one of the two things you just said. Anyway, yeah, that was that was I heard that a no, lot. Oh, you're talking about NOFO, probably. No, no yeah, fo. No, yeah, well, that's yeah. the notice of funding opportunity. Yes, yes. That, I heard yeah, that. Just a lot. think just think, I, I, I um, just think just think mofo, take the M off and put it in. <laughs> that's <laughs> how that's a common um, government contracting term. Yeah. But well, excuse you, Rob, because you just woke up. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like Mofo better. Can we change it? That's what yeah. I'm saying. But, uh, you know, did you year. get the Mofo? <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded great. the Mofo. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to check out y'all's performance because I I saw that when I looked at IoT Coffee Talk this morning. Yeah. And it didn't have an episode number, but I'm like, what is this standalone little thing? So I oh. haven't watched it yet, but I'll have to check oh. it out. Okay. Well, it, it's, it, it's, um, one, is it 170 or 169? 169. 169. Yeah. We and, artificially put a, for the podcast, like threw a number on it just so we would, yeah. Cause I, okay. I don't know if Bill and I were aware that Leonard ended up taping a, a coffee talk right after we did our session that morning. And so I was like, oh, where did this come from? Okay, we got to figure Uh-oh, it out. Uh-oh, a two-for-one special. It was a two-for-one. 
Yeah. See, look at all the cover- yeah, look at all the coverage you got, Jeff. Double feature. That's pretty good, right? You got a coverage. I would see coffee talk representation. Yes, but how many eyeballs? How many eyeballs? <laughs> Do- dozens. Oh, hey, <laughs> IOT, IOT Coffee Talk alone has 200 million subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Lots of influencers on are right, on that show. So. That? We're, we're really big on the dark web. That, <laughs> by the way, that, sound, that sounds like a mofo, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> We love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, it, well, did you guys get to enjoy some mountain air while you were there? While you were there, especially Bill in this leaving this hundred and five, oh, hundred and ten oh degree my weather. God. My goodness, that that weather there was was awesome in comparison <laughs> to what we had. In, in comparison to that disrespectful Texas weather, it is, <laughs> isn't it? It is disrespectful. Very yeah. much so. <laughs> I know one of the highlights for Bill and I was going out for the ice cream taco truck thing. I missed that. You missed it, Leonard. There's the taco ice cream tacos thing during one of the breaks in the afternoon. And so that, that was memorable. Yeah. Just well, a little thing. Someone should have, someone should have been pitching or talking about, it. Should have, they should have had someone doing a, a session on stage. from the ice cream taco truck, actually, yeah. <laughs> you know, cause that thing was like a tractor beam pulling people in, you know, was yeah. there a wait for it? Yeah, there was a line. There was a line. People wanted it. Come there was somebody, ice what was cream it? Tacos. Somebody was sponsoring. What is it? Broadband was, uh, money. Broadband that money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Is that money for broadband? Sounds like a crypto. <laughs> so they 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 um, provide help. Well, if you know anything about government funding, it's it's uh, it's like pushing a heavy rock up a mountain. There's a, there's a lot of work involved in in getting through the grant process. Yeah. But in but in this case, um, one of the things that they're helping with is is mapping. So the quality of our national broadband map is not, even though they're in the midst of trying to correct it, it's it's always going to have flaws in it. So yeah. they they provide um, consulting services in and around that, as well as the grant funding portion of it, and really trying to help state governments think about the best way to deploy and utilize the, the bead funds. Yeah. Mm. So, okay. As yeah. to the genesis of the name, I have I have no rhyme or reason or understanding of how they that was the only um that was the only dot available at the time was dot money (laughs) i didn't even know dot money was the thing that's awesome (laughs) you need that rob tiffany dot money i'm gonna go register (laughs) show me the Uh. (laughs) (laughs) i like that Uh, well i've locked down mofo dot money (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome But yeah, Jeff, you, you, you brought up an interesting point. This whole map, a, a lot of talk mm. was around maps at your yeah. event. Maps, bad maps, get better maps. I don't GIS. People, Dig- a lot of people don't even know what, what maps have to do with anything, like the, the average person, you know? So the, the, the problem historically has been with the maps is that, well, funding is based on the credibility encased within the maps, right? And the problem has always been that um, what what you find, if you go look at the national broadband map previously to this latest iteration, it was it was done uh, by advertised speeds rather than actual speeds. So yeah. if you look at a census block and let's just say your your census block, Rob, where you live, if you were served, but nobody else in your census block was served, that census block would be considered served. Cool. But then there's a lot of debate around the quality of and and the, the um, you know actually whether or not the service your provider is suggesting that you have is actually in line with reality of what you're experiencing. So if they say that you're getting, I'm just making numbers up here, you know, a 25 by three connection, but you rarely see 25 or three, um, then there's a problem with with what they're reporting to the FCC oh, yeah. in terms of the yeah. service they're delivering to you. Yeah. And so historically that has been a big problem because you could, you could effectively lock a census block down from federal funding. Right. Uh, based on the example I just gave you. So the, the, 
what they're trying to do now is they're obviously they're trying to bridge that gap by by um, by you utilizing speed test results um, at a local level. Now, the problem with that is, is a lot of consumers don't either don't know a speed what a speed test yeah. is, how to access it, or even care. Yeah, and no, this is this is super interesting stuff because you know I where I live and I live pretty close to the Qualcomm headquarters in what you would consider 5G Ville. And I swear to God, I get SOS service here. Your iPhone goes into satellite SOS yeah. mode, like you're climbing it, the Andes mountains. It's actually gotten worse. I used to get 5G and I'm in a 5G coverage area, but the only way that I can, um, I, I mean, it, what do you do when the carrier you can you can call the carrier up and say, hey, look, I'm getting SOS in your your 5G coverage area. And the only thing they tell you in response is, well, you know, we're, we're, we're eventually going to upgrade our network. We only have one cell tower. And then you go and you delve into what they have in the area. And it's like a, a single uh, a single low band tower servicing a bunch of and, and, and this is this is this there, is there, in a rather well-to-do area we're not talking about rural we're talking about dense uh suburban but but this it, has it always been the problem to, huh this has always been the problem and yeah. this is i think you and i have discussed this ridiculous. before but yeah the, the problem is 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 um uh, mobile service this is a giant fallacy a fallacy for me i just i just think it's 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 vapor nonsense oh yeah the problem has always been and I, I always make this argument it doesn't matter what iteration of of mobile service we have 5g 4g 3g and go backwards how is it in 2023 after what, how many years now have we been have as the industry been ta touting 5g is it four three four years oh more than that Six, okay five. So, so how is it in 2023, then you bring up a good example that I can be in downtown Denver and I can have 5G, which I know it's not, yeah. 4, 4G LTE, or I could have no G. Oh, yeah. I, I could have yeah. your experience, right? How is it? So there's not enough, there's not enough infrastructure supporting the demand and, de, you know, device utilization on network. And this is always going to be a problem. So when people talk about, 5G's capabilities uh, of of handling the the workload of emerging technology applications. I kind of just snicker yeah. at that because I don't see how it's possible. Yeah, the, I mean the reliability aspect is is a big problem, and then also as a service provider, you have no uh, assurance metrics to work with, right? And mm. it's it's just. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I just did the telco world. Yeah, that's pretty nasty, dude. <laughs> I, it says I have five G ultra capacity, which is what T Mobile yeah. calls having their mid band from Sprint. In some places, I get one gig down, but right here from my house, I'm seventeen yeah. down and one point nine three up. Yeah, and and so I'm gonna say I'm gonna give that a big no bueno. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I get satellite. I have SOS. <laughs> Emergency. Yeah. So in other words, if there's an emergency, I have to walk outside, wave, my, you know, point my phone up in the air and use that little satellite, you know, the emergency SOS app and, tr and hope that one of the satellites passes over on a cloudy day. Yeah, but going on LinkedIn, this is going on LinkedIn right now. The wall of shame. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to I go back. I want to go back to something. I mean, we, we started talking about the maps. And, uh, and, we'll and Jeff, you made, you made, you, you said something that kind of sparked me uh -oh. a bit and that was census block. Oh yeah. So my thing, my thing is I don't understand how anyone can have anything to say when you're using two year old data, the census uh, block so, data so, is not accurate. Well, what do you mean by two year old data? Okay, so nine times out of ten, when they're when they're when they're using the census block data to create the maps first, 
right? Saying I've got a block of, of an area based on the census data and the speeds that are associated with. So yes, I, Mr. Telco provider, am delivering service to this area. And and so advertise speeds, that's one thing. That's you can advertise whatever whatever you want, right? Yep. Um, but if it's the it's what are you, how are you delivering that? If you are a cable provider and you got copper running, then you're sharing that with everyone. Yeah, of course. Right? Yep. If you've got fiber, then okay, how are your ponds set up and all that stuff? It, it really gets into the technical layer of, of all of of all of that in terms of what you're actually delivering. I think you need to show proof and not just one-time proof. I think you need to show regular proof that your service is five nines, four nines of this data rate delivery. Well, well, in, in a perfect world, you'd be right. But I just want to address something. So every year, uh, ISPs are required. Better. Is that from your WISP? That's from my WISP. Oh, wow. You're kicking the crap out of T-Mobile. Your WISP just killed my ultra-capacity mid-band. <laughs> Every year, um, ISPs are required to submit a, submit data on their network, and it basically contains, um, it's supposed to contain anyways, um, actual service speeds are delivering within their network. That That is what makes up the, the map. I mean, at a very high level. So every year that's required. Doesn't matter who you are, WIS, Patelco, cable company, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. You, you have to provide that information. But again, who's, who's providing oversight in terms of the accuracy of that data that's being turned in? And that's the problem. Yes. Yes. Right. But I mean, even when, you're, when you're getting ready to do, when you're getting ready to do broadband master plans and things like that, in a number of instances, if you're working with the city or, or municipality or what have you, they may not have GIS. So now you got to scale this stuff back to do the best that you can to kind of give an HLD high level design mm -hmm. um, and everything like that. I mean, I don't know. I've, I have, I have personally found it challenging to, uh, uh, to land on a, I'm confident that this is what you're going to get. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it, for By the, the way, this is what I have. Yeah. Can you see that? 31.5 it popped in for a second you gotta put it in front of no, your face it, it's 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 uh oh 315 260. yeah, yeah. that's know, good this, this might be but, that, new... but that but that's on wi-fi by the way that's not my mobile. right right i don't oh, dare no, that's, that's don't... mobile yeah i don't dare do mobile oh mobile. my gosh wow what is Woo. It, sir? Woo. 604 39.6 yeah, look at that uplink <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. we're 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 not near symmetric, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it not being non-symmetrical when you have those kinds of numbers, Bill. <laughs> you trust right. me. We we had we had a number a number of conversations when I was setting all of this stuff up because I knew what I was going to need. Right now, I think I have 98 devices connected in the house. <laughs> Imagine the interference. Just no, just 98. <laughs> Just, just 98. 98. Okay. <laughs> Leonard, imagine the interference. <laughs> hey, oh, the noise, the noise floor, the house. noise floor is not bad at all. I have no interference. Oh, really? Hey, oh, hey, Leonard, I wanted to go back. It. I, I wanted to go back to, uh, and and talk about something you said a little bit earlier about your the area you live in, and 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 draw a parallel. Yeah. You talk about going on SOS service. Yeah, I, I don't know if you recall on the national news last year, right after Christmas. Um, a city in Boulder experienced a like a hurricane fire that basically wiped. Yeah, out. I totally remember oh, that. Maui, yeah, um, wiped out like a thousand homes in like an hour. It was a, a, a freak. Uh, it was very dry dry that year, and it had these hurricane like winds come through at hundred plus miles an hour. And I, I don't I don't recall how the fire started, but anyways, it it wiped out. A lot, but the biggest problem was, the biggest problem was, is that, um, as you may or may not know, there is there is an interrelationship between 
um, broadband infrastructure from telcos and the mobile companies. Uh-huh. It, the fire was so hot, it melted Comcast's infrastructure, so much so that it also wiped yes. out AT&T's infrastructure. And they actually had to go door to door because cell phones weren't working. Wow. And then you were talking no- about the you were talking about the interconnected relationships between the infrastructure as it's being built between like a Comcast and an AT and T. This went down, so everything else that was tied to it went down. Right, because most yeah. a lot of people don't know that you know, like for example, down in Durango where I used to live, Charter used to carry Verizon out of Durango, <laughs> and the problem with that is is if Charter's infrastructure gets cut or damaged, the Verizon doesn't work anymore. Right. right? And, and so this was the case. This was the case in Superior, where in Louisville, where this fire happened, and they had no nine one one services. Uh, they had to go door to door to get people out. Otherwise, yeah, more that's people freaking died. Insane. Well, that's, that's probably what happened with Maui. You know, um, that fire burned so quickly and spread so quickly. I mean, I mean, that's probably what happened there as well right i mean think about how everybody was even emergency services weren't um coordinated and they couldn't communicate with uh, citizens right stuff like this happens right i mean we have people parked in cars waiting to get out and that's how they perished (laughs) waiting when you know somebody could have said hey get out of your freaking car you know like what they tell you on an airplane if there's an emergency leave all your belongings and freaking run you know run for the exits you know uh but in a single file line of course but i mean Mm, yeah patients are are critical and um yeah you're right um and uh you know in san diego we get fires and having this i mean it scares the crap out of me that we only get i only get sos i mean seriously if i have an emergency with anyone in my family uh, the, making a phone call is unreliable I, right. I, I i living you know just maybe three miles away from the five freeway okay uh, you know spading distance from the qualcomm headquarters have to walk outside, hold my phone up, and wait for a friggin' satellite. So I mean, I'm the one in rural America, and you send a tiny little text saying "help." It's crazy, yeah. crazy. I know you're in in the middle of uh, Bandera, ranch, <laughs> ranch land. Yeah, ranch land. Yeah. Ranch land. Come on, by God, Bandera. <laughs> but I'm in a 5G coverage area. It's yeah, just absolutely I, unacceptable. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> doesn't mean shit. Doesn't it means nothing. That's, it it means it disappointment. It, it, you, it's, you you know you know what I say about that. That shit'll never work. <laughs> Drop the mic. You know what? You should you should just write a freaking book of like of Bill Pew sayings, <laughs> and then underneath each saying, just have like case studies. You know what I'm saying? And use case I mean, and recommendation. <laughs> that's the it's the truth, man. It's the truth. Yeah, but it's well, also it's also the danger of marketing. Oh yeah, hype, hype. I, yeah. We always say that on IoT yeah. Coffee. Though. Hype is detrimental. It is not good. It is. It is something that people who are opportunistic will uh, put in front of people so that they can make a quick buck. This how just like they went on out. that whole the whole rant of five G is going to change IoT. What? <laughs> that was like a marketing hail mary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the no, reason I- IoT hasn't taken off yet is because we've been waiting for five G to come along. <laughs> now we can get started. Yeah, and, and, and then we go uh, right back to the same beginning. What is five G without fiber? Nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's nothing. Nothing. Very little. <laughs> a local network. Just like what is e- just like what is EV without fossil fuels? Boom. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's just it, it's kind of ludicrous, right? And then you don't really even need a core for that matter. Shout out to ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's still alive, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Ugh. we started the session off with DMX, we got yeah, a shout out to Luda. Luda. Yeah. Luda. 
I know this will sound really demented, but man, I wish I, I always thought DMX was the coolest name ever. And I was like, why didn't my parents name me DMX? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, I mean, given that that means dark man X, I I think that might be the case. WMX. Rob, I'm not sure. White man X. I'm, I'm not sure you could pull off the fashion either. No. <laughs> oh no. yeah, no, I think you can. You, you know you what? Lost? I've I've lost all fashions living up in the Pacific Northwest all these years. I've lost all sense of fashion. Gone. Yeah. As we say up here, like a North Face jacket is like the Seattle tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty um, bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Oh my you know, gosh. You know, the thing is, is uh, that assurance piece, I think, is important. And, uh, and maybe that has to be built into the plan. I don't think it has been built into the bead stuff because uh, it, there was a lot of talk about the maps, right? Yeah, you're right, Rob. Tons of talk about the maps, uh, talk about digital twins and, you know, but we're so far away from digital twins because nothing is really instrumented. Everyone's just kind of guessing, right? You're taking like secondary data points to stitch together what could give you a suggestion of the now in very specific wares, right? Locations. Oh. And, you know, when you when you bring up the cases that you brought up earlier, Jeff, where, mm-hmm. you know, a certain area can be designated as served, yet there's folks in the, that area that just, can't get that access. Um, I think uh, really brings into question: Is bead going to be able to uh, achieve its uh, aspirational goal of connecting everyone? Right, because this is about connecting everybody. That is the goal. That is the mandate, and that's how the program has been structured. How the funds are being allocated, and then. Uh, applications uh, reviewed and there's a whole challenge process I know but that 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 also looks like a costly endeavor for the recipients of funds right <laughs> and uh, communities that are uh, might contest that they aren't served right well so oh boy I hopefully nobody's watching this um so, 200 million uh, they uh, are yeah <laughs> But, but hopefully nobody in the telecom industry. Um, so the easiest way to answer this without getting into it, I'll get into some detail, but the easiest, easiest answer is if we're students of our own history, yeah. we will know, we would know that none of, none of the federally funded, federally funded programs supporting telecommunications have ever been successful. Why? There's fraud, waste, and abuse. Two, there's lack of oversight. Um, three, um, the, the, the way um, grant programs are structured, the lowest common denominator wins, which means, quite frankly, that you, you um, always, if you're going to select the cheapest solution, it's not always the best solution because things like uh, actual construction costs get missed. Yeah. And this is a problem out here in color. This is a problem out in the West. This is a problem out where we're uh, in the Northwest as well, where Rob is. When you have granite, the cost of building, especially where you have to bury fiber, is, it's very costly. Right. So a really good example, the Colorado Department of Transportation just built over over Wolf Creek Pass. Um, can you guess how much it was a mile? burying fiber in the right away there uh, one million dollars <laughs> exactly a million dollars one million dollars jeff it's the same here in the hill country in west texas we yep. have so much limestone and rock i mean when like if i want to go out and garden in my yard i can't because i can't even dig mm. even three inches into my ground and and plant something right you know because- i can't even do that so that's how bad the rock is out here and you're right. I mean, there are certain considerations that aren't even taken taken in when right. I think about the cost of. So, uh, and, and, and this this has happened quite a bit, right? So now the other the other the other problem I think is there are, are there are other mitigating constraints. 
So bead uh, all federal funded uh, and uh, federal, federally funded infrastructure projects are now subject to Build America, Buy America. And so if you're really looking at where this money is supposed to target, it's supposed to target um, high cost areas, as well as the areas I talked about before, where you have uh, disadvantaged communities um, in metro areas. But let's just talk about the rural high cost areas that are unserved today. Because a portion of this money can go to underserved as well, but first priority is unserved. Those areas typically are not always served by incumbents. They're always served by local, regional right. ISPs, whether they're telcos or WISPs or whatever. And the the Build America, Buy America thing um, introduces a few problems. One is there is a um, y- 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 the financial requirements and constraints for a small company operating in rural parts of America are going to be cumbersome at best. Yeah. Um, the California, great place to not do bead. Why? Because you have to look at the state environmental laws in California. It makes it impossible to do anything, especially where you have to dig. Yeah. So any place where you've got to dig, um there's a lot of environmental constraints around it and it adds my point in all this is it adds cost yeah right and let's not forget the 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 one long-term thing great thing that's going to come out of this is that we're um federal government's forcing companies to onshore manufacturing because right now 55 Mm percent of anything that you use in an infrastructure project has to be made in america Mm. has to be and so if you can't meet that, and it, as you, as Leonard, oh, I'm sure everyone knows, it's very difficult to do this with electronics, right? right. How, how, do you, how do you get it to? So Nokia recently made an announcement where they're onshoring 100% of the manufacturing for all of their electronics in the U.S., right? They're doing it in Wisconsin. Now, no, no, of course, no. we all know that, components found in the electronics can't possibly be Mm -hmm. made here right so this brings in the chips act right so there there is very i'm telling you all this stuff and jumping around because it's very complex no 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 no. it's like you know it's building on top yeah you're connecting some really important thoughts but nokia is i i spoke to with the nokia folks and i was i was asking if they were um making their also making ran equipment locally and they said no. This is yeah. only for their wireline, you know, uh, fiber routers and CPEs and and things like that. Right. Uh, so it, it's not. I mean, it's a great move. But you know, the interesting thing, I um, at the conference, you didn't hear anything about five G. Didn't FWA. There, there seemed to be a little bit of reluctance around that, but a realization that it might be an option, especially for the extremely costly <laughs> areas that you you also mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it's funny because the the five G community or the the wire, uh, mobile wireless community thinks there's a huge FWA opportunity, and it's like it's really resigned to being a last resort, you know, and you kind of mentioned that on our, on our panel, but that was one of the things that really kind of uh, stood out for me at the conference, because I thought going there, everyone's going to be talking about 5g FWA and everyone's going to deploy <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, wave and, uh, you know, there was talk about um, Terra Terragraph, right? Um, yeah. Unlicensed. But yeah, unlicensed because it's cheap. But is that really going to be a an uh, an option that a, a lot of the grant applicants and the service providers are going to fall back on? You know. But I th- I th- so, so would I like to have more dialogue around five G fixed wireless? Of course I would, and I will next year, right? Because I I think T Mobile um, and some others, Verizon are going to come in. But the problem with five G as a reliable um, enabling Be broadband careful. technology. For, you, we we spent ten minutes talking about your poor experience in San Diego, yeah. and this is one of the reasons why 
um, I don't have it featured on the agenda because we need to get fiber built first to Bill's point. We need more fiber infrastructure built. And I think if you really look at um, where 5G has to go, how would you build out a, a large city? W would you consider it a horizontal build or a horizontal and vertical build? Mm. Right? Hey, so it, it's got to be horizontal and vertical. Right. It's got to be both, right? But whoever yeah. talks about that and whoever talks about the complexity of doing that. Well, because that means that you got to partner up with people. Well, uh, I understand that. But but you get people don't want to partner up, man. Right. But OEMs you, want to be that one throat to choke. Right. And and I've got your solutions end to end. Nobody even flipping understands end to end. Yeah. <laughs> or heterogeneous. You know, they want to keep it simple. They dedicate it to uh, you don't want to deal with the complexity of having to make different types of infrastructure and uh, technology decisions for a heterogeneous environment. And then have you cost estimated that going in, you know? Uh, so. Um, but you might recall, you might recall during our session that one of the things that, that I had talked about was, was, and I think this is up right up Rob's alley. So how, how do you build 5G? Let's just talk about 5G. Let's not talk about fiber. How do you build 5G? in rural America where oftentimes home offset is so divergent, right? Some homes are 30 feet from the road and some are 350 yards away from the road mm -hmm. down a hilly tree lined road uh, driveway. How, how do you get infrastructure from the road to the premise, to the farm? How do you do that? Cost of coffee. Oh, cost effectively. <laughs> yes. I right. have to throw that in there. For, yeah. For and, and for, and for uh, Bill. <laughs> yeah, those caveats. And it's going to have to, you know, lower frequencies too uh, to get down there, you know. That's yeah, tough I'll, stuff. Yeah, just like for where I live, I'll never see fiber. We don't have the population. They're not going to come out this far. Like you said, we're a mile back. Our neighbors might be five miles back it's just not going to happen right yeah that's a, that's a you know one of the things i want to shout out talk i talked about how i learned a lot which is the most important thing about going to a conference is i learned a lot at this conference and i think the one thing that jumped out at me that i'm sure you know obviously jeff probably knows about it forever i was in a session and i learned about one of the most underserved towns in America, a border town in Texas called Far Texas, P H A R R Texas. And I learned about how that town pulled itself up by the bootstraps and they couldn't get the help they needed. They worked with all these folks. And just like our whole Elevate Our Kids, getting kids' laptops and connected to the internet they had a whole bunch of kids that just weren't connected. I think they managed to somehow get them laptops or something, but they weren't, they couldn't get connected. And so you got, you got to have both. Right. And, right. Yep. and that's what we learned as we bumbled and stumbled our way through COVID. Um, and this town just took it upon themselves to find a way to make it happen. They used a lot of different government programs. They, I know I'm missing lots of details, but they managed to get fiber to all these kids, you know, to the homes, to, and I was hearing about ridiculous symmetrical speeds that these people are getting for like 20 or 30 bucks a month or something. Like um, up and down, I think. And I'm like, and I, and I, it, and I know it's, it's a lot of government programs that helped them out to do that. And, and it just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. And I was like, wow, talk about that. They were scrappy. They were hustling. They did you know, the work. <laughs> they found a way to make, they just said, we got to make this happen. And man, they made it happen. And From what the a inside great, out. Yeah. what a great case study, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, th I mean, this is, a, there's always these anomaly stories. And I yeah. think that's a great yeah. one, right? And I'll give you another one. The, the Boulder County School yeah. District got in trouble with, well, the FCC tried to make trouble for them <laughs> because they, they were serving students in their home in, so they're actually providing services to students that were being underserved and unserved. And these students were living all over the county. And the FCC came in and said, hey, you can't do that. And they said, yes, we can. We're, we're, we're providing a, an essential service to these students just so that they can do their homework and do the stuff they need to do. 
um, it, yeah, there's there's a lot of great stories out there. But the problem is, is how do you how do you take a far Texas or Boulder County or one one of Bill and I or East Palo Alto or, or Bill and I one one of Bill's and I favorite uh, talking points is Chattanooga, Tennessee. How do you not make how how, how do we take those exa- great examples and figure out a way to replicate them as often as we can so they don't become a one-off great no. story that yeah. no one else can seem to replicate. Well, it, ta- it, it takes organizations and events like yourself to oh, yeah. take the best practices of of these particular examples and share and put the information out there and take the learnings and co- share that and communicate that and and connect those people with the people that did that because you're only going to learn from those people that have already done it. But I mean, part of it is, I mean, and a lot of people don't want to hear it and they don't want to talk about it, but you know, this whole, and I think I mentioned it, the public private partnership and all, I mean, we love saying those things and it's going to take collaboration. Show me the cities that really want to do that. Show me the utilities that really want to do that. And I'll show you that they can replicate exactly what has happened in, in these anomaly type cities. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? Yes. The wind blew in the right direction in Chattanooga, for example. So it was like two things. They don't want to share their data and they don't want to really partner like they say that they're going to. Dirty laundry. I mean, we're not it, sharing. It is, or it takes, or it takes a a you know someone outside of that system. I mean, for as many cities as I work with, did did, did I take time to understand how what rules there were in the city? No, because if I if I take the time to really understand the rules and you're going to abide by the rules and you're going to do then I become part of that same problem and I can't get out of it. Right. You'll be stuck too. Yes. But if I just come in and go, look, this is how we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to I mean, yeah, we're probably going to, you know, do some things that people will go. You can't really do that. Well, we already did. Sorry. Yeah. You, uh, Bill says I'm in the um, business of circumventing. All day, every day. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a he's a bill in the china closet, man. He is yes. <laughs> all the <bills>. habitual <laughs> hey, so, line stepper. So, uh, <laughs> guys, yeah. um, we have to wrap it up here because we actually Stephanie Stephanie and I have a call to uh, with a potential um, sponsor. Ongoing All right. sponsor for the show, which we really appreciate, and we appreciate their intent in supporting uh elevate our kids so for all of you guys out there who are wondering why what the hell do these guys do jumping on every week um with such dedication and vigor is because we're doing it for for uh truly uh, bridging the digital divide right i mean we're actually doing something about it and so again charity or fashion right Boom. um just go to or both yeah or both just buy a crap ton of shirts and donate 90 million dollars that's the pathetic. digital divide right there that's yeah, pathetic. we live in the digital that doesn't even qualify. you're underserved dude it's i'm underserved <laughs> you're freaking underserved i have i need to get served my house yeah. <laughs> I, I have to challenge because I, for some reason, we're, we're I'm in a in a five G coverage area, <laughs> but hey, but, Leonard's under re, underserved and under resourced. So Rob's is underserved. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm gonna, still using a Mac from the. 80s. I've got I've got GPRS coverage here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I want to give props really quickly to um, to to Jeff. Oh my God, I had his name Lewis, who jumped on our. Uh, on our live uh, IoT Coffee Talk at Mountain Connect because he had absolutely no idea what to expect. Kind of like Jeff, you have no idea really what to expect. Yeah, we didn't prep you. There's, we have no idea what we're going to talk about. But, I, but I, I will say I am disappointed in you, Leonard. Why? Because we've been on this call for an hour and you haven't said anything about the robot. Oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> That was really great. Thanks for inviting me up. And you know what? I was really surprised that it worked. Other than uh, the moment where you were laughing after your prompt, and then 
it stopped listening. That was the yeah. only snafu. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it, it went really well. In fact, um, it did a little predictive stuff where it would. It, it now, is that on the video the that question. we can watch or is that not uh, on the video? No, no. It, oh. will, it, it, it will be here in a, um, another week or so. I'm waiting for Oh, the, you'll have some footage. Yeah, on my website at mountainconnect.org, you'll be able to see it. And on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, there you can see that. Yeah. So, and and everyone should go. It's a great conference. Not too many, not too many, because Jeff doesn't <laughs> want to become the next CES. Keep it guy. networking worthy. Yeah, um, but uh, that was a great a great conference. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, walk on elevate our next kids next year. Next year, remember, um, party up. That that's got to be our walk on music because okay. it made a huge difference. You know, when I overdubbed it <laughs> on the last episode, you know, on that uh, episode. And uh, um, so with that, thanks for uh, hanging out with us this far. And we will see you next week. Remember, subscribe to www.iotcoffeetalk.com. Uh, donate, help bridge the digital divide for kids K through 12 and underserved and unserved communities. And we will see you next week. And don't forget, mofo. <laughs> Me objectives for opportunities. <laughs> there you Did go. you say mofo or nofo? Mofo. mofo. <laughs> I'm out. Thanks, guys. Bye.